Hi, everyone. Welcome. We're going to continue our series talking about uh, couch-based data synchronization and replication capabilities. Today, I want to focus on XDCR. So I've brought in my friend David. He's a solution architect at Couchbase to talk about some more and show you a really cool demo. Couchbase has both intra-cluster and inter-cluster repl replication. So intra-cluster is what's being used to ensure even distribution and high availability of data on a Couchbase server cluster. Now the protocol used to pull that off is actually that little arrow line at the bottom of the diagram on the left there, that's DCP, the data change protocol. Now that same protocol is used for inter-cluster replication and that process is called XDCR or cross data center replication. And that's used to replicate data between clusters. And that's what we're gonna be talking about on this presentation. Now, XDCR is designed for global replication. So replicating data between multiple regions, multiple data centers, or even multiple cloud providers. Some databases, some distributed databases actually take the approach of having a single cluster that has nodes that are on different data centers, but they're all part of the same cluster. Uh, that uh, introduces latency that would just be too high and it would hinder performance. So Couchbase actually takes a different approach of having uh, two separate independent clusters that you can then synchronize with XDCR. Now, XDCR can be very simple to get started. You're gonna see that in the demo. It's a very, very quick and easy thing to start with, but there are a lot of powerful features and options involved in it. So first of all, XDCR is continuous. Uh, changes to data in one cluster are immediately queued up for replication into other clusters. Replication can also be unidirectional or bidirectional or a combination, depending on your use case. And finally, replications can be set up between on-prem, cloud, and multiple, multiple combinations of those data centers. Now, this is a more detailed view of how XDCR works. Now, notice that the replications are to and from the managed cache. So the managed cache is built into Couchbase. It's memory where data is stored. This means that when new data comes in, new writes come in, there's no waiting on the disk for replication. That makes this a very low latency. We're talking microseconds and you know, plus network latency. So very, very quick. Additionally, uh, there are data streams for XDCR. So Couchbase automatically shards data, splits it up into uh, units called V buckets. And each one of those actually has its own data stream. So that can introduce some parallelism as well to further improve the performance and reduce latency. XDCR is actually a cluster to cluster operation, not a node to node operation. So depending on the use case, each cluster can be tailored to different purposes. XDCR just moves data. So for instance, you could have a cluster set aside for disaster recovery or backup that potentially uses a smaller amount of commodity nodes compared to your main cluster, which will have more services and maybe need higher performance for working with operational workloads. So they don't have to mirror each other. You can have different node configurations. They can still communicate over XDCR. Unidirectional and bidirectional are both supported. Some use cases that are different though for each of those types of replications. Unidirectional is great for disaster recovery and, and like a hot spare. It's also good if you wanna have a downstream development or testing cluster with some, some recent data from production. And of course, reporting, auditing, archival, we'll talk about that more later. Bidirectional is good for certain use cases uh, like data locality and geofencing, but we have to get into conflict resolution when you have writes potentially in both data centers. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. But for right now, what I wanna do is I want to uh, throw it over to David. He's going to walk us through a demo of Couchbase XDCR in action. So take it away, David. What do you have in store for us today? Thank you, thank you, Matt. What I'd like to show is uh, Essentially, a, a uh, I'm running two Couchbase clusters within the same OpenShift Kubernetes cluster, I, and I'm going to show you how our Couchbase autonomous operator, which is used to mainly uh, deploy and manage Couchbase clusters within Kubernetes, uh, can also manage your XDCR replications, uh, configure the connections between the two Couchbase clusters, as as well as uh, create and manage the replications between the two. So what I have here is a six node uh, OpenShift cluster running in a public cloud environment. 
Uh, we've installed the Couchbase operator through Operator Hub. Um, and we have two different namespaces with two different Couchbase clusters running in. So we have a namespace East, which has a Couchbase cluster named CD East. Um, not too imaginative, but uh, still gets the point across. Um, as well as uh, we can also show the Couchbase uh, clusters as in all namespaces here uh, as well. So you can also see that we have a, a CB West, which is located in the West namespace as now, well. Now, David, these are all running in the same data center right now. Is that correct? Correct. You would it, all within the same uh, Kubernetes environment, which is its own kind of data center in a, uh, you know, in the, in the cloud. But, so, if, but if you had two different data centers, this would also, it would, it would be just a different configuration, right? There's some additional configuration to expose a Couchbase cluster outside of the Kubernetes or OpenShift environment. We re require a uh, load balancer external networking, which we call public networking. Uh, anytime uh, you you use this, uh, you will also have to um, configure uh, TLS and encryption because we're not going to allow you to uh, put anything insecure potentially out on the cloud, as well as name resolution. And there's a lot of cloud service providers who have like Route 53 and Cloudflare. There's a lot of different um, uh, DNS providers that uh, you would be able to configure using the external DNS operator within Kubernetes. So let's take a quick look at each one of our Couchbase clusters. So the first of which is CB East. You can see that we have three nodes, uh, each running data query and index service. Uh, we have a couple of buckets configured. We have the travel sample bucket. We're using the Couchbase sample buckets that uh, I believe uh, many of the users are very familiar with at this point. So we have travel sample, which is populated with data, as well as beer sample. So we're, we're going to be the source for travel sample and replicate that over to the, our West cluster. And we're going to be the target for beer sample replicating from the West cluster. So if we look at XDCR here, we can see we don't have any remote clusters defined and we don't have any replications defined. Now, there's two different ways of managing XDCR or you can choose within an operator environment whether XDCR is managed by the operator or if it's self-managed, uh, so to speak. If it was self-managed, then we would use this screen to be able to add our remote cluster and then a remote replication. But we're, we want to configure this uh, the cloudy way um, and have XDCR managed by the operator. Um, you can see what kind of information this is going to ask. Uh, uh, User-defined cluster name, uh, an IP address, which is reachable, and then uh, uh, basically credentials to be able to handle the replication. So we look as well on West real quick. Uh, we're going to be the source for, for beer sample and the destination for travel sample. So let's get through uh, configuring this. The first thing that we want to do is to configure the remote cluster for each. And so what I'm going to do is, is via, uh, via uh, a, a secret in the command line and, and a combination show you kind of the steps that are required here for the configuration. You know, the first of which is we're going to need the credential, um, whereas we had a, a dialog box to be able to enter this in within the XDCR, we're going to add this in as a Kubernetes secret. Pretty simple. Let's make sure we're in the proper namespace, east, and we can just add the secret from YAML. You can see not, not very imaginative that I am using administrator and password, but obviously, um, you know, you would want uh, credentials and role-based access controls to be part of, of your configuration. So I'm going to configure the same thing in West. So the first thing that we want to do after we have the secrets defined is basically define the remote cluster. And so you can see here, this is part of the Couchbase server YAML. This will be a running configuration that's already been deployed on Within the, uh, the, within the OpenShift environment, you can see XDCR is managed equals true, and we define our remote cluster with the name, the UUID, as well as host name, and then the, uh, the authentication secret that we just deployed. So where do we get the UUID from? Uh, pretty simple. We can just do a cube control, 
get CBC for Couchbase cluster, CB West, namespace West. You can see that's, that's how we get the UUID to be able to populate this field. So let's go ahead and edit our, um, our East cluster with the West remote cluster. Search on XDCR. Okay, you can see all we have populated by default is just managed equals true. And just to reiterate there, when if it was managed to false, then you'd have to go to the Couchbase UI to add and, and change these configurations. But if it's managed true, then you can actually manage them via uh, the Kubernetes YAML uh, file here. Absolutely. Okay. And this YAML file is, is uh, customized basically to Couchbase. It's part of the Couchbase operator that can interpret that YAML file. Yes. So if we look under, let's look under East, we look at our Couchbase cluster here. What I, what I basically just did would be the equivalent of clicking on the Couchbase cluster and then editing the YAML here, which this will iterate through um, uh, configurations as the Couchbase operator is actively managing the cluster. Sometimes this file gets revved before you can actually um, you know, edit, edit the file live. So let's go here and we'll go back to Couchbase East. And as you can see, we do now see the remote cluster is being defined. This typically takes, if you're editing a live cluster, um, no matter whether you're doing an upgrade or deploying a new component, typically takes somewhere, you know, along the lines of about, you know, 20 seconds or so to propagate changes. So let's go and do the same thing for the West cluster and configure the East cluster as the remote. And the operator, all the YAML files are very finicky as far as spaces and dashes and everything else. We have a, a complete reference available within our documentation, which would help you out, as well as adding more fine grain type of uh, controls in there. Okay, what we want to do here is make sure that this change got propagated to our user interface back on the West cluster. We look at XDCR. It should pop up momentarily. So while we're waiting on that, uh, what's what's our next step? Well, you can see we have a remote cluster. We don't have any replication set up now. Right. We so these clusters can actually they know each other exists, but they're not actually sending data to each other yet. Correct. Correct. So what we can add is what we call a couch-based replication, um, configured and managed by the operator. So if we look at our replication, YAML, pretty simple. Um, and keep in mind, there's a lot of fine-grained controls that can be added in this. I'm just for the simplicity of a, of a straightforward demo and a starting point showing a fairly basic configuration. But if we look at this, you know, we have what we're defining as a couch-based replication. We've named it replicate east to west, keep it simple. <laughs> and the replication name is travel sample from east to west. And we can see that in the spec, we have our source bucket and a remote bucket. Keep in mind that the replication will require the destination bucket, scope, or collection to exist in order to replicate all data. Okay. This, we go back here to East and look under all instances, we can create a new couch-based replication directly here. And you can see that with our, our operator hub to install operator, uh, we essentially will pre-populate a lot of the data. So it makes editing it so you don't have to build your configurations from scratch. It might give you a, a, a decent starting point. So we're gonna go ahead and create this replication. We can look, look, we're gonna look at buckets on the West cluster. And we look on the East cluster, we're gonna wait for our replication to show up. And as soon as it shows up, we should start replicating data. Now these replications you're creating, these are unidirectional, is that correct? That is correct. And what does that mean unidirectional? <laughs> we're replicating from one source cluster to a, uh, a destination cluster. 
Uh, bi-directional, it's also, uh, uh, we also have the ability of doing bi-directional um, replication within an operator environment as well. But we are, uh, we're doing this for simplicity's sake, and at least uh, this seems to be the most common use case when replicating, uh, say, you know, mul multiple data centers within a Couchbase environment. As you can see, the, the data has already been propagated off to the west from the east cluster to the west cluster. Uh, let's look at our documents here. We can change a document. You can see how fast it gets propagated. Uh, you can see, let's just change mile error to mile error hyphen two. So you're changing the data in one cluster. It will be propagated to the other. But if you make a change to that other one, it will not be propagated back. That's what unidirectional means. That is correct. <laughs> and you can see that data has already changed here. Okay, so we've done this. We've done this in one case. Now let's create a, a replication from beer sample on on the west cluster over to beer sample on the east cluster. Let's change our project space from west east to west. We can do the exact same thing. You can also do this from the command line. Sometimes it's just a little bit more fun to do it through the GUI. You can see you can also add in filter expressions. This has a, a, an example for snappy compression. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of fine grain access controls are available. So we created the replication. Let's look at XDCR here. It has not shown up in the in the web UI yet. Once it does, we should see just about immediate propagation important to note is that the concepts will be the same no matter whether you're rep you're configuring and managing an XDCR replication in Capella, whether you're using Couchbase server, a combination of the two, or multiple Kubernetes clusters. Okay, so you can see we're already replicating and the beer sample data is being populated. You can see we also have, let's see, if we look at the replication, I can look also at the XDCR stats. Uh, pretty interesting dashboard that's that's also worth looking at. So we can see the beer sample. We have 7303 on both sides. Let's go do the same thing. <laughs> Once again, let's, uh, let's just change one of our, so say we have the wrong uh, zip code here and we want to change it to 941. Right, and this is demonstrating that this happens instantly. It's not something, a process that runs every night or something. It just runs uh, in real time. Um, as changes are made, as writes are made, the uh, changes get replicated to the other cluster. Yep, continuous replication by default. You can see now Now we've got the data has been changed and propagated. Well, that's that's what I wanted to show you as part of our demo today. Um, any Any further questions or comments, Matt? No, no, David, that's great. I appreciate that. And I want to go back because uh, you mentioned some other configuration options. I want to go back to the uh, slides to wrap up and talk about some of those options that might be important to you and uh, your use case. All right. So one of the things that we mentioned was um, conflict resolution. If you have a bi-directional replication, that means that uh, a write could potentially happen to uh, each cluster independently of the same piece of data, and that could potentially put them in conflict with each other. So in order to resolve those, there are a couple of methods of automatic conflict resolution built into XDCR. So one of those is sequence-based, and that just means that the higher sequence number of whichever document has the higher sequence number is the one that wins. Basically, the document that's been modified more times is the winner. The other option is timestamp-based. So the document with the most recent timestamp, the, the ones modified most recently, is the one that wins. And so those are ways that the conflict can be resolved automatically. So but as, as David alluded to, if you're setting up bidirectional uh, replication, you need to make sure you understand the uh, how, how that works and the implications of that and potential conflicts that uh, could be present there. Uh, because otherwise, it might end up with some unexpected behavior. Uh, another thing is that, uh, and Dave mentioned this briefly, is the scopes and collections, which is kind of a, a newish feature to Couchbase. So it's, I think it's worth mentioning is that there's two options here. Uh, 
for mapping between all these different key spaces, which is bucket scope collection inside of Couchbase, the different uh, structures for organizing your data. So implicit mapping means that the collections and the scopes uh, are going to have the same name as the ones defined in the uh, source bucket. So it's just going to assume they're the same name, automatically copy those. The other option is explicit mapping, which means you can actually set up a different name if you want to between the uh, different buckets, scopes, and collections. So you have those options there. Again, it's important to be aware of that when you're setting up those, especially if you're using the scopes and collections feature. One more uh, interesting thing to talk about is filtering. So filtering can be used to include or exclude documents from being replicated. So in this example here, on the right side, you can see that the source bucket has two airlines. Uh, one of them is uh, belonging to the US, one of them belongs to France. So if we have a filter that says that the document must contain, the country must contain USA, otherwise it's not replicated. So this could be used for uh, use cases like geofencing, if there's some legal requirements where about data locality, for instance. So certain data cannot leave this country, um, something like that. Um, that's an important uh, use case that XDCR can address with filtering. So it can be either regular expressions or an XDCR filtering expression. And the last one I wanna talk about is deletion filters. So I mentioned the idea of archival and reporting as a use case for unidirectional replication. So by default, if you delete a document in the source bucket, that deletion will be replicated to the destination bucket. So if I delete airline 10 in the source, the airline 10 will be deleted in the destination, unless I turn off uh, document expirations, document deletions, and TTLs, et cetera which means that if airline 10 is deleted in the source, it will not be deleted from the destination. So this is important for use cases where you want to be able to track the history of some data, uh, even though it may not exist in the operational part of the uh, data anymore. So that's a, that's a really good, uh, something to keep in mind for your use case involves archives and reporting and that kind of analysis. So that's it for XDCR today. And thank you very much for joining us and thank you for watching.